Another common use of mail merge is to create a directory. Now a directory is a little different than mailing labels, and let me create it and you'll get a feel for how it's different as I do that. Once again, directories are often created from a blank document, so I'm going to create a blank document. <clears throat> and a directory is kind of like a phone directory. Instead of every record getting a separate page, or every record getting a separate label, every record shows up on a new line. So we get all the data formatted just the way we want in a common file, in one page instead of multiple pages. So once again, I'm going to mailings. I'm going to start my mail merge as always and choose a directory this time. Nothing much changes. I'm going to link to my data file. Same data file I've been using in all my recordings. You don't have to use the same one, but in a way this is a good example because it shows that you can have multiple documents. They're all linked to the same data file. Always a good idea to store them in the same folder or at least consistently in the same kind of folder. All right, what I want to do here is I want to simply show the people's names and their phone numbers. So if I kind of a phone list, if I want to call for numeric or a money donation, I can call them. So once again, I'm going to insert my fields, first name and the last name, and I want the phone number. Now what most people do in a directory is they have the first and the last name separated by a space in the first column and then the phone number over here someplace. And the book uses a nice technique, kind of the same technique I showed you in the tabs recording where I created a table of contents with leader dots to help tie things together. So I'm going to create a tab here. Remember this is used to change the tab type. That's a right tab. And I'd like to be all the way over here at the right margin. But from the Unit 2 recording you might remember that I cannot set a tab here because there's already a right indent marker there. But I can set a tab here and then double click it to modify it. And I can change it in a number of different ways, but I think all I'm going to do is add the leader dots, set, click on OK, and then to put it the right margin, you simply drag it. So I'm going to point to it and drag that so it's in the right margin. Now in front of my phone number, I'm going to press tab, and that moves it over. All right, so we have 12 records. Let's merge this and see what the end results look like. Uh, it looks pretty good, except what's with the Jill attached here? What you need to do, and this is a very common mistake, so I'm not going to save this. I'm just going to close it. It's the advantage of doing this. You can merge until things look just the way you want to. What you need to do in a directory is actually physically enter a carriage return after the end of the line so that every record starts on a new line. So let's try that and see how it looks. Okay, that's much better. Let me turn off our markers here and see that that looks pretty good. And all the phone numbers are a little bit different, so it does seem to have merged that. But I would like some titles on here. So once again, I'm not going to save this and modify my main document. And in front of this, I'm going to enter the titles. And so here we'll call this the um, adopter name. And then I'll press tab. And notice I get the leader dots. I don't think I want that in my title, so I have to remember to remove those. And over here we'll put the caption phone number. Right, so the first thing I want to do is in this paragraph only, this top paragraph only, I want to remove the leader dots from this tab. I still want the tab there, but I don't want the leader dots. So I'm going to point to the tab, double click it, and take the leader dots out. Say none, set, OK. And now my headings just have the text. I think I'll make a bold face and underline. And the same thing here. Bold face and underline. And let's see how that looks. That should look much better with the titles at the top. Uh-oh. Downside of the directory is everything you put into the main document gets repeated for every single record. Well, that's not what I want. So how do I fix that? Book doesn't discuss this, but let me show you. Again, that's not what I want, so I'm not going to save my merged document. The way you fix this, the way I would fix it, there's two ways to fix it. What the book would suggest is that you don't put it in here, so I'm going to cut it. You merge. And then when you get here, you just paste it at the top. 
and that works pretty good. But then every time you merge, you have to remember to put those titles back in there. There is a way to include the titles in your main document. The trick is to do it in the header. So here I go to the header, and I'm going to paste my titles up there. The header of the document is not repeated on every single page. Unfortunately, now I get a little side effect, and I've got a little extra space there. What happens if I take the extra marker out? That doesn't do anything. But headers and footers are designed to be a certain distance away from the top of the document. Right? From the top of the page, excuse me. This header is a half an inch down of a one inch margin, a half an inch down from the top of the page. Well, I can push it down a little bit so that it's closer to my text. 0.7 looks pretty good. There's a little space. Close the header, and now let's see how it merges. much better. These look like they're grayed out, but when you print them, remember that's a header, when you print them, they won't show up as gray. They'll be dark black. All right, so this is just grayed out because it's in the header right now. So that looks pretty good. If I wanted it a little closer, I could move the header down a little bit, but I played with it and it just gets a little too close. I uh, don't think I like the single spacing, so again, I don't want to have to do it over and over and over again in my merged document. So I'm going back to my main document, and I'm just going to select this first line, and go to the home tab and change the line spacing to one and a half. Don't see much difference here. A little extra gray at the bottom. Once again, mail merge. Any change I make affects every merged document that I create from then on. So this is looking pretty good. I'm going to add just a little bit of bonus material here. What if I want a watermark on my page? Many companies have watermarks built into their paper. It's just a light company logo or something in the, built into the paper. Uh, small companies like our Elephant Adoption Service here probably don't have that kind of fancy paper, but you can simulate it by adding a watermark to your document. Once again, I want to add that to the header because I only want it to show up once. If I put it in the document itself, then for every record, I'm going to get one of those watermarks, and I don't want that. To insert a watermark, you simply add a picture, and there is a picture button on the header footer toolbar, so I can use that, or I can use the insert tab. I'm going to add a picture, and I'm going to once again go to my desktop, and I'm going to go find my elephant picture, but it's small. That's okay. And now I'm going to put that image behind the text and I'm going to wash it out. The washout makes it much lighter so that I can read the text through it and that's part of the color system here. We just got to find the right one and there it is. See how it's light gray with no color so that's a washout. Makes this much lighter. This is behind the text and now I can move it. I can even move it outside of the header and the footer. Just because you put the header or the picture in the header doesn't mean it has to stay there. It just means it appears on every page, in a case of a picture like this, on every page located where I put it. I'm going to change my zoom here so I can see the entire page, make my elephant a little bigger, and maybe center it. And I played around with it a little bit, and I like to kind of have his elephant head lined up near the top of my titles up there. Okay, let's go back to 100% zoom. And he's a little blurry, but it's not bad. And if I now merge, I'm going to get lots and lots of names. Okay, lots and lots of names, but just one logo and one set of titles. Okay, my markers keep showing back up again, but we'll turn it off, and now you can see how that's working. This elephant would only show up once on the page, so if there were more names, they would just show up underneath the elephant. Notice I can see our company logo in the background, but I can also have the text nice and dark, and it looks like it kind of floats on top. Give that a quick save. This is going to, actually, I'm not going to save this one. I could recreate it anytime I want to, but I am going to save my main document. Once again, the book uses main document in the title name so this is the elephant directory might not be a great name because it sounds like we've got a directory of elephants or let's call it so we'll call it the adopter <clears throat> directory and remember to add the main document that tells you that this is the document that has the fields in it that's used to create the merge files later 
So that's a directory. Every record follows the others. It doesn't start a new page, doesn't start a new label. The distance between them is controlled by you, by adding blank lines between paragraphs, by spacing, those kinds of things.